Our next caller is RC from Texas. Hey, what's up, RC? How can we help you? Hey there. How you going? Doing, guys? <laughs> Real good. Great. Yeah. Um, well, I've just um, I'm uh, I've been into fitness and, and you know exercise for for years. I've kind of changed the the way I've gone about it over the years. I used to be a long distance runner, but now I'm thanks to you guys, very um, into the strength training. Uh, I'm pretty new as a personal trainer, and I just got started as COVID kind of hit. Which, you know, so going to, you know, try to get a job at a gym wasn't quite an option. So I've been been trying to figure out the online route, um, kind of a slow start. So I was just kind of curious what you guys would, would suggest um, as far as um, how to get started as a new trainer in today's environment. Okay, that's, that's a great question. So uh, we've said many times on the show before that we think one of the best places for trainers to start is in a big box gym, and there's a yep. few there's a few reasons for that. One, you're going to get presented a lot of opportunities, a lot of people you can talk to. The hard part about building your business is kind of done for you. In a big box, you get uh, clients, you get you know people working out that don't have trainers, and you can really be, gain a lot of experience there, and probably even shadow trainers that have been there for a little while. I still think that's the best way uh, for trainers to get started. Now that gyms are reopening, I still think if you're new get hired at a big box gym and work there for a year or two and see if you can become the top trainer at that facility before trying to go build your own business. Now, simultaneously, I do still think it's important to build an online presence. I think that's just, mm -hmm. that's the business card of today. You know, you, you need to have right. some kind of an online presence at the very least for potential clients to look you up and to read about you and to see what you're all about. But I still think you, the bet you're you're gonna you're gonna learn the most and gain the best experience mm. uh, the quickest by working with more people and being presented with more opportunities, which you're gonna get in a big box gym. Yeah, it's tough. I totally agree. Like I I do think it does take that hands on approach and and being able to be in an environment like that where you can get uh, more volume uh, to to really hone in on your craft. Uh, but I do highly suggest in the meantime, even before doing that, that you really put yourself out there with your friends and your family and you apply a lot of your methods and what you know uh, uh, to helping out people that are close to you and, and that, that can give you real feedback and critiques. Uh, so that way, you know, you can at least get the ball rolling, the momentum rolling in that direction. So there's three things I would do. Uh, I agree with the guys. I would get a job at a, a, a big box gym. So the 24s, the UFC gyms, the uh, Bally's types of those, a big, big box that's going to see a lot of workouts and take everything that you can. Don't be one of those trainers that's picky. Take it, work as many hours as you possibly can, see as many faces as you can, practice on free appointments as much as you possibly can. Then I would use my social media. Don't think about your social media right now as I'm going to try and grow it so I can get tons of followers and make that as a lead generator. Use it to service your current client base. So as you are talking to your clients that you're and you're learning this, going through this process, and they ask you a question because one of them has gout or one of them has diabetes, or, and you as you are learning and you're going through and you're like, oh, I don't know much about that. So you go and you research information and you learn. Share that on your on your on your Instagram or share that on your Facebook, and start to use what you're talking to your clients with as a pl another place that they can receive that content. And what will naturally happen is you will attract more people that have those same conditions or issues. And you'll also provide an even better service to your current clientele. The third thing that I would do is absolutely join our Facebook group. Uh, most of the people that are in there um, are personal trainers and professionals. So most all of them are, are professionals, personal trainers, and certainly people going through the program or people that are aspiring to be one day. And the community is unreal. Uh, you, you could post a question about a client that you're currently dealing with. People do this all the time in there. And not even a half hour will go by before 10, 15 other trainers have posted uh, their opinion on that or help it, helping you troubleshoot whatever you're going through. Or if you, if you don't have uh, many of the MAPS programs, I would invest in, in those as a, as a skeleton for you to use and learn from how we've programmed in there. And then to put your own spin and flavor. And when you're training somebody that has specific needs, adapting it to them. And then again, using the forum 
to be able to modify things that we've already kind of laid the blueprints mm -hmm. out for you. So those those are the three things that if uh, I had to start all over, didn't know any anything going on, um, I, I would use those those three resources. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. I, I do have uh, I have several of your programs. I'm following Aesthetic right now. Um, and yeah, but I, I've heard about your forum. I just haven't been on it yet. I've heard you guys talk about it, but that, that sounds very handy. All right, no, no problem. We're going to give you access to the forum, okay, RC? Oh, really? That'd be cool. Okay. Yep. You got it, man. We um, got you. Yeah, I'll put that to some good use. Thanks, guys. Perfect. No awesome. problem. Yeah, make sure you say hi and tag us when you get in there. I definitely will do that. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, the, 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 the training space, the trainer space definitely has been challenged, but mm -hmm. the market is still growing. Yeah. If you look at the numbers, the it's, market for trainers. It's and definitely the landscape is changing, but I totally agree with both of you. Like I don't, I don't know where you could get as much practice uh, as you could in a, in a big box. And that's why it's yeah. even better than like a, a private, like I wouldn't go to a private studio. I wouldn't go to a small unknown gym. If you can't make it in a big no. box, you'll, you'll crash and burn in a private studio yeah, for and, the and, most part. And, and of course there's like, you know, a trainer that may be in the thick of all of it might, you know, sit there and try and tell you the pros and cons of one of the, Oh, you know, private, there'll be more educated trainers yeah, I make and more money. you can make more money more and more specialized, but you're not going there for that. You are yeah. going there because this company before you built it up to be a hundred million or a billion dollar company and they did something right as far as their systems and their ability to attract tons of leads. Yep. There's a lot to learn from that yep. and there's nowhere else you're going to get literally, you know, 20 plus reps a day potentially yeah. on Just people. dealing with all the variables. Yes. You know, like troubleshooting is such a vital process to, to personal training. I, I don't think people realize it's like detective work. Like you get somebody just coming in, well, well, what am I dealing with? And a lot of times they don't even know what to tell you. So you have to learn uh, the right questions and you have to really have experience to identify these And things. the other mistake I see these new trainers making right now is that they all want to become the next insta famous person and trying to figure out what they're all doing to attract all these people to build a business. I would absolutely not even try to do that. I would use it just like I said, as a, as a tool to enhance your already current clients. So your current client that you're starting to train right now, as you're having dialogue in that hour, you're training them. You guys remember you're having conversation yep. about what they're struggling with. And that is all your ideas for content. Right. And then I'm going to go home. I'm going to, I'm going to go deeper into, you know, learning more about what that person was talking about, how I could help. And I'm going to, and I'm, I'm sure. really speaking to them, but I'm going to speak in general on my, on my social media. And I'm, and I'm going to start to build it like that. And really it's, I'm not going to focus on, Oh, did I get 10 more followers? It's hopefully this provided more value to the people I'm already helping. And that will naturally start to attract right. other people that have those things in common. That's right.